Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy right here. This is the Leatherman Pre uh, Free P4. Um, first off, though, I want to thank actually my buddy Advanced Knife Bro. Um, he is another YouTuber. Uh, he's great. His editing is astounding. He's he's one of the better YouTubers working right now. Probably better than I am in a couple of meaningful ways. If you're not following in his channel, you need to be. But anyways, he loaned this my way, and I very much appreciate it because yeah, it's gonna be good, cool to uh, check out. Next thing, let's do a little bit of a size comparison. First off, of course, uh, Spider. Delica. As always is tradition on the channel here. See that size-wise, it's actually not all that big, although it is pretty good and thick. And then we'll do it a more meaningful size comparison. This is the uh, Leatherman Charge TTI. Um, this right here is the Leatherman Wave. And so, as you can see here, that in terms of size, it's maybe a little bit longer than the Wave. It's a little bit longer than the Charge. And in terms of thickness, it's actually... The Charge TTI is a little thicker. It's about exactly the same thickness as the Wave if you put aside these little tabs back there that we'll talk about in a bit here. So that is your size comparison. Then let's go ahead and do a tool tour real quick just so you can see what's going on. I'm going to maybe miss some of the ancillary, oh, you could use this groove to, you know, diffuse a detonation cap or whatever weird stuff they put on the, you know. But anyways, what you've got here at the front of it clearly are a set of pliers, and you have removable cutting heads, which is actually a great thing. I wish that some of my older Waves had that, and now the Wave Plus does, so that's something to keep in mind, but still. Um, it has a nice set of pliers up at the top here. You have a crimper down at this neck of the woods here. Um, we can close this guy up. You can see here you have a, a uh, serrated knife, complete with a little chisel edge on the front of it there. On this side, you have an actual freaking saw for actual freaking sawing things. Um, you have a uh, an actual knife blade in 420HC, and you have a pair of scissors that can deploy out like this. And uh, that's a nice thing as well. Put this back into place. Then these guys in the middle here, you have a uh, Phillips head driver that's kind of half thickness here, as well as a pry bar slash big thick flathead driver. Um, oh, and the Phillips head driver had a cap lifter on the front of it, by the way. I'll point that out there. See, cap lifted down there. Um, and then on this side you have, if I pop out these four tools in the middle here, you have a uh, file over here. You have two directions of file. You've got cross-cut and otherwise. Although you don't have the saw along the side of it, which is something to keep in mind. Um, you have a thinner flathead blade, uh, which also serves as a rule, which also serves as a... Um, you can use it with this guy here as a wire stripper. Um, so there you go. Um, you have what is sort of an awl, I guess, but with a flathead tip at the end of it and a sharpened edge down here. So there's that. Then you have yourself a bottle opener down here. Um, so there you go. Those are the tools that are involved in this knife. Perhaps I'm missing one or two. Maybe I'll cover them later on. But I think that's actually covering everything. So there you go. That's your tool tour. Let's go ahead and talk about the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly. This very interesting little multi-tool here. So on the good side, to start with, one of the big things that you probably noticed already is that there were no nail nicks needed. What you can do here is just, because of the way that these are working, all the tools are accessible from the outside. So you can just kind of put your fingernail in there and pop all four of them out very, very easily. Um, it's very, very easy. And you can do that, you know, even if you keep shorter nails, that's not a problem. As opposed to, for instance, trying to get up into here and dig around for these tools in the wave, that's not ideal. And so I definitely prefer that method of deploying tools. That's, that's better. You'll also note that all of the tools now lock. You can see here there's this little hook, and then when I, here, I'll open this knife all the way. As I finish opening the knife, what happens is this little piece here, which is under spring tension, will slide back down and now at this point, I cannot close this tool. And I, I've got the entire thing is, and you know, there, there is no way to close this until I, on either side, because this bar can be lifted from either side, lift that and close it again. So what this means is that all of the tools here are locking tools. Um, and that's, that's just great. I like that a lot. And they're all accessible without opening the tool up completely first. And so that's, great. I like it. I just like it a freaking lot. So that's a very, very good thing. Next thing, you have very easy one-hand access to knives. Try and remember that this one is the actual pocket knife version. Um, and because you've got this little groove here, and you can get your thumb in there and pop it open. And then again, when you want to close it at the end, you can do that one-handedly as well. That's very, very nice. And frankly, I think I like it a little bit better than the line-to-lock approach on the uh, the original wave here. 
although it's not a huge difference there. Um, but nevertheless, you can very easily get to these knife, to the knife particularly, but to the other tools one-handedly, which I like a lot. Um, that's good. Next thing, you have replaceable cutters in here. Um, this doesn't feel like a big deal, except when you cut something that's harder than your cutters, and then you end up with burrs on there, and so it kind of, each time you try, I, I like having that option. It's a good thing, although they've done that in the new wave anyways. Next thing, you'll see here that they have moved from a security Torx bit, like on this side with a little uh, post in the middle there to a regular Torx bit. Little detail, but if your tool ever comes loose, you are absolutely going to want to have the, you know, actual Torx bits rather than them Torxing and then dicking you around at the same time. That is a nice little detail. Next thing, this has room for either a keychain or a clip. You can screw that in here. This is the keychain mount or lanyard mount, I suppose. Probably a weird keychain item, but hey, why not? Or you can use a folding pocket clip that lands on here and hangs out a little bit from your pocket, but still, you got that as an option there. Or you can remove it entirely. Both are good details. Next thing, this has some very nice tools on it. Um, for instance, it has sprung scissors. Um, what you can see here is that uh, once I put this guy into place, the scissors actually do open on their own. So you can actually get in there and kind of nip things up. Mind you, this isn't going to be, you know, perfect for Arts and Crafts Day, but it'll certainly do the trick and they work well. Um, you also get a very nice pry tip. Uh, where is that? That is this guy right here. Pop that loose. This is a very nice pry bar here and that you've got a fair amount of thickness, a fair amount of beef to it. It works pretty well. That's a good little pry tip. You have a scraping tip at the end of your serrated knife, which is here, I think. No. These, unfortunately, are not labeled uh, on the basis of which knife they are. It used to be that the serrated knife is labeled at the top with a little serration. Um, now it doesn't appear to be anymore. I guess it, no, it, it really isn't. <laughs> but anyways, you have this little scraping tip at the very end of this guy here. And you do have the wire, stri uh, wire stripper as well as a scale. So, you know, that, that that's nice, I suppose. Um, and then finally, on the good side, the uh, knife on this guy, the, the, the main uh, basic blade on this guy has a very nice grind. It comes to a very thin edge, 420HC, and just it's a good overall shape with some flats and belly. A nice sharp tip here. It's a good, good knife. And it's got this little area here, which means even if it does let loose, it's not going to come shot on your fingers. Beautiful freaking thing. So I'm a, a big fan of the blade on this guy. So to me, all of that is the good. It has a great knife grind, nice tools, um, good keychain to clip options. Um, they've moved to uh, regular Torx rather than screw you security Torx. As replaceable cutters, there is easy one-hand access to most of your tools. Or, I'm sorry, to the, the blade tools. Um, you have better uh, blade locks and all of the tools lock for that matter. And there's no nail nick needed for uh, getting into the majority of your little guys here. On the great side, I love the pivot on this guy. So one of the major differences, the wave is held together by friction. At every point here, there is friction here that is causing me to, you know, struggle to get this open or closed. And, you know, closing it again is a question of overcoming that friction. There is not really a detent or anything like that. Whereas this guy appears to be using some kind of a magnet in there. And so if you're able to get your finger in there and kind of slide this open, then, then the whole thing pops open on what actually feels like a ball-bearing action. And then at this point, you have sort of a cross between a multi-tool and a ballast saw, where you can kind of pop it open. And actually, I can't do this under a camera, but I was able to do it successfully many times in my everyday life, where you can actually use this centripetal force here to kind of fling the, this guy open. See, I locked one side there such that it becomes open in your hand, which makes it very easy to open the pliers with just one hand. Whereas on the wave, you really need another surface to do that um, successfully. This guy is truly one-handable, I believe. E-N, uh, you know, certainly if you need one hand, the one-hand tool might be a better choice. But look, this pivot section, basically the fact that this deploys much more readily, and frankly, it's much more fun to deploy. There's almost an element of fidgeting to it. And also the fact that when you close the pliers, watch, these little tabs here are going to drop into these little grooves. Oh, yeah, that's satisfying. And overcoming that requires a little bit of force as well. You're still not going to be able to use the priors to, you know, pull something open. But at the same time, yeah, it works well. So I'm definitely loving this pivot. It feels just better. You've got a better detent on the pliers. It just, it works really well. So um, the best part about this guy, absolutely 100%, is that change to the pivot technology, which just makes this guy work better the bad side. Um, it's using these little tiny studs right here. There's one right here and there's one right here. I have absolutely no idea in what universe it felt like a really good idea to pop up a little piece of metal exactly where you're going to be gripping this knife, uh, uh, this multi-tool, that is. I don't freaking get it. Is it the end of the world? No, but guys, why? Just why? Why?
So um, that, that, that shouldn't be. Um, next thing, some of the tools don't feel super necessary. For instance, you've got your little scale on this guy. Um, for instance, uh, well, for instance, it is exactly this little guy right here. And you can see here that it gives you a couple of centimeters worth of measurement and about an inch and change. The thing is, so did the wave. But the wave did it for much longer durations. You actually had a scale built into the side of the thing. Having this on there really just feels like an excuse for another uh, flathead dip as well as this little guy. But I don't know that I need that particularly. Um, similarly, you've got a bunch of these little pry tools, but and then you've got an awl on here, but it's not really all that you need. Uh, okay. Um, in that, you know, the, the, the hole is very far down, and then this part isn't actually sharp. It's just kind of weird. It's a, a very strange tool. Um, and there are some tools that are missing as well. For instance, you don't have a smaller Phillips head, uh, which is not something that's super ideal. I, I generally like to have you know, multiple sizes of Phillips head. Generally, they do that with the bit kit, but not here. Um, and that's something that's fr uh, frustrating. And the other thing that you're missing is a um, cutting edge on the file. So on the file originally... Uh, on the wave, for instance, you have this little edge down here that actually allows you to do some cutting on metal. It's kind of a little hacksaw-y kind of thing. Um, whereas on this guy, if I find the file, which is no longer identified, which we can also put in the bad, it used to be that you could tell what you were looking at without pulling it up. Uh, no, that's still not the file. Oh, that's right, because the file is now an inner tool, which one could actually argue is a really bad idea because having a full-length file has saved my bacon on a number of occasions. Look, I don't mind the scissors being full length, that's kind of nice, but at the same time, guys, yeah, they have defiled it, if you will. But this doesn't have that back, uh, you know, area to actually do some cutting with. And that's something I've used, actually, more often than I expected I ever would. So that's definitely something going on. Um, and those things are missing. Next thing, this guy requires magnets. Um, I can see here I've got these magnetic tweezers here. These are definitely, this is a magnetic tool. Um, it's not the world's strongest magnet or anything like that, but the thing is, any time that you have uncontrolled magnets about, you have potential issues. Um, it, because, well, it can pick up things like, you know, random shaving, metal shavings, and things like that, and direct them inside the tool. The other thing is it can do things like demagnetizing hotel key cards. This is not a big deal in everybody's life, but at the same time, the fewer magnets you have on you, generally speaking that can be problematic. Uh, so that can cause some complications. Then finally on the bad side, they are charging extra for the pocket clip. Um, no, that doesn't work. Um, it's just nine bucks, but the thing is this tool is a little too expensive as it stands. And so adding extra for the, the, the lanyard hole and pocket clip, it's just not doing it for me, Leatherman. I mean, it should be, well, <laughs> free um, with the purchase of the tool. I, I really don't see that being an, that, that, that extra cause. Feels like nickel and diamond in a situation where it's already, the value isn't necessarily super clear already. So to me, at least that's what's bad, is that they are charging extra for a pocket clip that should be free. Um, it, they, it does require some magnets, which can cause some complications. There are missing tools, namely the full-size file with that um, hacksaw-style thing on the side of it there, as well as smaller Phillips heads. Some of the tools don't feel super needed, and they've got these weird little studs here that just don't have any damn reason to exist. Um, on the ugly front, uh, there are no bit kit drivers. This is the thing that drives me maybe craziest about this. On the original Leatherman Wave Charge, etc., um, you see here that they've actually just got this hole here. And this hole carries these little bits. And these little bits are astounding, not only because you can carry whatever bits you use most often in your tool, but you can also buy the little bit kit here, which gives you all sorts of different things. It gives you a variety of Torxes, Phillips heads, Allen screws. All of these things are, like, I use these so damned often. It is very, very rare in my, you know, for instance, when I'm at work that I end up needing another screw, uh, I'm sorry, another screwdriver that is not part of this bit kit. And when you couple it with the extension, which I always do, I usually carry in just my my everyday pouch um, in my pack, I carry the Leatherman Charge here, I carry this guy, and I, and I carry the full bit kit with the extension. And as a result, though, this works great. Um, I am well equipped to handle any set of screws that may come my way. Whereas on this guy, I am equipped to handle precisely one side of Phillips head and then a couple of different sizes of flathead, and that's it. That's, um, that's a loss. That is a big loss. As a matter of fact, this, for me, personally kills the tool. When I realized there was no bit kit driver, it was just like, nope, this guy's sending back the advanced knife, bro. Not for me. Absolutely 100% not for me. So the fact that it's missing the bit kit driver 
just kills me. I really, really desperately wish that they had gotten rid of some of these other tools and just thrown the bit driver in there, because frankly, that's way more valuable, at least to me, than uh, a lot of the other stuff they've got in there. Then finally, on the ugly front, this is 140 bucks. Now look, I have no problem paying 140 bucks for a multi-tool. I mean, you'll see that I carry on a regular basis the charged ETI. Mind you, I generally recommend the Wave, but I bought this guy, and I like it, so I carry it both. Um, but considering that the Wave, which is frankly almost a better tool than the DT I here is only 99 bucks and now includes, for instance, the removable cutting jaws. I in the plus model, there is just no damn reason to go here. This is 40 bucks more expensive than the Wave Plus, and I feel like it is in a couple of ways. Big one being the bit kit and the file, a little bit inferior to the Wave Plus. And so 140 bucks is a, a fine price. But it needs to be better than what's available at 99 and I'm not sure that it is. So to me, that's what's ugly, is that it's 140 bucks, which is more expensive than a better tool, and it is lacking the bit kit drivers, which for me is just a complete, you know, boom, this kills the freaking tool. Um, so final conclusions, this is a sign of some steps forward. I, I agree 100%, this is the best made Leatherman ever. Um, and it certainly has some great things to show about the future. If they were to release uh, an updated version of the Wave with the same tool complement as the Wave, and this kind of a mechanism, oh my god, yes, that would be great. And, you know, this has some great things to show us about the future. Because I, I do believe, you know, look, the magnet complaints, they're not such a big deal. I truly do like this deployment mechanism. I think it's great, and I would, if I could magically, you know, clap my hands and my wave has that, I would do it in a heartbeat. Similarly, I really like the lockup mechanism for both the knives as well as the tools. These are really great steps forward. You've also got better hardware and just a nice supplier action overall. In a lot of ways, this feels like the best made tool that, you know, Leatherman has ever made. Um, but it also feels like a manufacturing demo. It's showing Leatherman, Leatherman is showing us that, yeah, they're up in their game. They're doing some things that will make them better able to do some really amazing stuff in the future. But unfortunately, although it's a great manufacturing demo, I don't think it's as good of a pocket tool as some of the other stuff, because there are sacrifices with things like random pointy bits that are inexplicable, with re redundant tools, missing tools, oh god, lack of bit kit drivers, ah! I mean, for me, the, the wave and the bit kit are basically all that I need to go through most of my everyday life. I mean, it does, you know, 90% of my out and about, you know, dry, it's just like having the, having this, the, the extension, which by the way, you can then use this guy here as a handle to get more torque on things. Uh, look, this with the bit kit handles, you know, 90% of the screwing that I do on a regular basis. Um, we're going to pretend that I said that right. <laughs> Anyways, um, so now uh, this is able to do all the screwing I need to. Um, but now I'm on this guy. I'm stuck with a couple of sizes of flatheads and an iffy Phillips bit, and that is just a huge turd in the freeze punch bowl. Add to it the fact that it's more expensive, which uh, than the wave that is, which I think is made you know well, but it is just a a better tool overall. That makes this guy a non-starter. I cannot think of any human that I would recommend this guy at 140 bucks to, uh, rather than the the wave plus at 99. That's just a better tool in my estimation. Um, with some tweaks, this could absolutely be a gem. Throw a bit kit slot in there, damn it, Leatherman, please. Um, alongside the pocket clip, which is included for free uh, with the tool at this kind of a price point. Maybe you could lose some of the needless tools and maybe fix the little issues. Or, you know, even maybe go back to the scissors. I don't know. A file I could maybe live without, but still. That's a little bit of an issue. Then this knife, I'm sorry, this multi-tool, that is, would be worthy of serious con uh, consideration. But for now, I feel like the free here is absolutely 100% the best made Leatherman ever. But unfortunately... It's also proof that best made is not necessarily the same thing as best. So that's kind of my feeling. I think this is a sign of great things to come from Leatherman, and I think that once they redo the wave with these kinds of features, you will have a world beater. But as for now, with some of the decisions that have been made here, I'm afraid I'm just going to have to wave this little guy right on past. So anyways, there you go. Hope this has been interesting and that you have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.